What's going on? It's your man Kali. Welcome to another episode of the Status Escalate Podcast. The music business show where every other week I speak with artists, craftsmen, and entrepreneurs to pick their brain about their strategies and journeys to their success. Giving you ideas to implement into your own career. And hopefully the confidence and inspiration to plan and execute your next moves. Today my guest is Kent Moran. He's a longtime musician and actor, but Kent's also made the move into other aspects of his passion as well. From writing, directing, producing, and much more. My man's done it all. He's still barely get started. His most recent movie is also his directorial debut where he stars opposite to Michael Clark Duncan in his last film. It's a great movie called The Challenger. I'm not going to say much more. Let's just get into my talk with my brother Kent Moran. I put in work and watch my status escalate. I'm Kent Moran. I'm a filmmaker, uh, actor, and musician and uh, started out in the industry maybe 10 years ago, I guess. And um, Mainly been doing my own independent projects and passion projects, but also um, acting when I can in other films and stuff. Uh, and now I actually from from New York originally moved to L.A. for about, like I said, nine years or so and then just came back to the New York area. So uh, just pursuing it back here now. And that's where I'm at, man, like. You know, not being too much into that side of things in the film world, uh, I, I do know enough to know that not everybody, um, you know, is a writer, producer, director, um, you know, does the music for the uh, stars in the whole movie. <laughs> like, you know, you're I, the very much a do-it-yourself type of guy and all those things, mm-hmm. which I really respect as an artist myself. Um, where do you think that comes from? Does it, does it come from, like, an, a necessity standpoint or just... You know, thank you, man. Yeah, it definitely comes from a necessity. If you asked me that like nine years ago, I would never think I'd be doing all this stuff like I'm doing now. But uh, but looking at it, actually, over the years, I've been like, you know, I probably got a lot of influence from my, my father. Actually, my dad was like an entrepreneur. He started a bunch of different businesses and um, a lot of them failed. He had a lot of failure in his life. And then like probably three or four of those businesses uh, were real successful eventually. So it's like, you know, I think I learned that sort of go getter attitude and like do it yourself if you have to and work hard and all that from him. Um, but like I said, I didn't realize that at first. I just wanted to be an actor and was pursuing that. And then when I realized, you know, um, I saw other people making their own projects and things and I realized I had this um, need in me to like tell stories too. It wasn't enough to just act for me. I personally felt like I had to share some things. Um, and so that was always what I was doing with music at first. And then when I was acting, I didn't ever think it was possible to write and direct your own movie or something. But, um, you know, that first idea for my first movie came to me and we just just got together the team and just somehow made it happen. Still mm-hmm. kind of crazy, but yeah. So so the first movie, well, hold up, before I skip forward to that, um, you know, as, as like myself being an artist and, and starting early on and not having let's call it help or even um, the attention of people who could help me. I just was mm-hmm. like, okay, or, or I should say like this, this may be more motivation for me to learn these things. I had friends who would help me, but when someone's doing you a favor, sometimes they're great about it. Sometimes they're not. So it's like, okay, true. <laughs> all this is relying on you. You're doing me a favor. I know it, but can you commit to this time frame? If not totally fine. I'm just going to have to find someone else to do it. They commit to it, you know, three months after that, <laughs> maybe they mm-hmm. come up with it after pulling their teeth out. So I learned to be at least what I consider to be decent in everything I need as an artist. Um, do you think any of those things kind of play a part in, you know, you being such a Renaissance man? <laughs> no. Yeah, absolutely. Like before I started making my own stuff, I was, you know, <laughs> I was in an R and B group at one point where like, you know, I, that was sort of reliant on other people, producers and things that had put us together. And, um, I was, uh, doing a lot of different things where my whole career was basically reliant on other people. And like mm-hmm. you said, I was like, you know, waiting for that timeline and then it wouldn't show up that, that personal R and B group was interesting for me. Cause I was in that for literally a year. We recorded like 13 songs with like three different producers. We started with um, some producers that were at Columbia and then, um, you know, that they, we ended up leaving them and went with some other people. Bottom line is after a year, we never got to get any of the music, you know, because we're all the like fighting behind the scenes yeah. between the producers and the studio, whatever. And it really did 
not much for me besides all the learning I got out of that. And that's what sort of motivated me to say, you know what, I need to like be more proactive about it myself and take some things into my own hands. So, mm. so you did the music first. What was the name of that R&B group? Oh man, we went through so many names. None of them were good. I... <laughs> uh, tell me uh, something. Give me, give me something. Give me some of your your. Well, give this me was one back, favorite and one least favorite. <laughs> this was back in, um, you know, like the in sync backstreet, like after that, but a little bit oh, after that. I was that, hoping. So... Tell me you got oh, like a screen, goodness. like a headshot or something for me. <laughs> one of them was called. One of the names was, uh, and we were never released, so right, just okay. you know. But one of the names was for you. Okay. Yeah. That was bad. No, that's not bad. You uh you know, I mean, remember all for one, so for you, this guy's Exactly. That's sort of what it was like. Exactly. <laughs> that's a word. So you did the were you into the music first before the acting as far as actually doing it? Uh prof- well like whatever you call professionally, yeah, for sure. I mean I've been doing both, you know, since back in school and all mm-hmm. that. But um but once I graduated and stuff, yeah, that was what I thought I was gonna do at first was just the music. Is it like as far as the knowledge and experience in both, it's kind of like one hand washes the other. You learn from this, you apply to that, and vice versa sometimes? Oh, absolutely. Even like, I mean, now I use it even like with, if I'm composing something or like working with my composer or different things, it's like great to have that background. Yeah. I think even just kind of having the smallest experience in everything, it's enough for you to at least know uh, there's a flag here. Like this person's in charge of this. I have very little knowledge, but I know enough to know you're trying to jerk me or you're just not good at this or, you know, you lend an idea, help in hand sometimes. I think it's important. Exactly. It helps you decipher who's really, you know, bringing something who's you know, and, and it just helps you manage the whole situation, you know? If if I'm paying somebody to do something that I'm way better at and I could actually do it, it's like, no, God, mm-hmm. you got to be better than me at this, all right? Or, or you're doing <laughs> yeah. it for, like, very cheap. <laughs> true, um, true. You know, uh, one of the things I, I found when I was kind of doing a little background on you is that you studied under, I, I don't know who she is until I see that she's a founder of The Groundling, Suzanne Kent. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah, yeah, she was great. Great woman. So, yeah, so that was that was lucky. We basically I started with a class at the Groundlings and uh, with her, and I had also taken with another woman there. But um, Suzanne took me and a few other students, um, and basically she had a private class where she uh, we'd meet every like I think it was twice a week. Um, pretty intense stuff, man. She got me to do some crazy stuff I didn't know I was capable of um, in, in the room and everything, and uh, that was great experience improv was never something i thought i would uh you know be be great at or anything but it really actually just opens up all of your acting when when you do the improv it's great how do you think does it help in any other um non-acting related things especially you as an artist um as a musician um does it help in other things yeah it helps with everything i mean it just helps you to like you know it's all about being on the spot and being in the moment and it just really helps you to like be there when you're you know if whether it's singing a line even in business and stuff we actually had a girl in the class who was not an actress at all or anything she turns out she became a news reporter but it helped her for sure as well and uh yeah she's quite big now so yeah i've been wanting good. to uh explore that when one of these days where i get some extra time and some money because i would think i know right? you know i mean just having uh just being a little quicker is going to help you in everything that you do even just real life well you pretty much do it on a daily basis it seems i mean it's basically freestyling is so much like that that's like you got to be in the moment you got to be ready for every next moment you're not even thinking you're just sort of doing you know? yeah yeah i, I agree and I, and I feel like doing an improv class or maybe a few is only going to make me better as far as that goes and like a stage performance or something so i i always encourage uh you know any homies that i have to do that type of stuff mainly so that they could come back and tell me how it is <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You guys be the be the test dummies, but that's cool, man. Uh, that's real, especially. I mean, any any kind of work like that, I would think is um kind of like a. I mean, I assume you've done other acting classes. How did that compare to to like working with her? Oh yeah, definitely. No, there's there's a lot of different types of acting classes. So I did like you know scene study, just normal, and then I did for the camera, where you learn how to like you know, act for TV and film, which is so different than stage. But, um, but her class it was like beyond all that in terms of just breaks you down to your core. You're either like laughing and being hilarious and like just living in this crazy moment in this world where anything can happen or 
you are bawling your eyes out and you had no idea why you're even how, how you even got there <laughs> but you use those tools later like when you're in a scene and you can remember how you got there and uh and call upon some of those things that helped you get there that's yeah that's that's cool like that ink instinctive type you know you uh repetitive routine working it out all the time and then you know you could do it on a dime can can you drop those tears on on a dime or what no you know it's it's okay so here's the thing you can you can if you can tap into this thing but you can't tap into it all the time like once you have something that you know will get you there mm -hmm. you only can tap in for at least for me a few a few times before you need something else um so it's like life you know you got that's why i say to people when they want to become actors and stuff and they're just in la the whole time it's one of the reasons i moved back to new york is like i just feel like it's always a grind sometimes out there because everyone's in the same industry mm -hmm. in, in a way whereas i just want to live life and like experience life that's what acting is about that's what storytelling is about so like for me i love traveling i love like going around the country and seeing different places and experiencing different people because that's what life is about and like sometimes i can get too involved in my career where i forget like well shit if i'm not living my life enough i'm not going to be able to bring that to the roles or anything i'm kind of uh, doing this for myself right now but feel free to chime in because <laughs> sometimes it's hard and i know you do so many things you're so busy as well like to to step away from what you're doing to take what you consider to be a break especially you know i have a wife and two kids but sometimes mm -hmm. that break is necessary for your art to breathe anyways, because you got to come back and write that next album or song or create that next screenplay or whatever your art is and to let mm -hmm. it come out or else you could just be potentially doing the same thing over and over again. Do you? Yeah, exactly. You don't want to stifle. You want to keep that creativity real and organic and stuff. So I feel like that's where it comes from. When I step away from a piano or away from a script, you know, for like, two weeks and then come back it's usually like way better because i'm just ready to you know put something down for for you to and i would assume you have some sort of help but it seems like like of course um you know to put it out there you have a movie called the challenger really dope movie by the way i gotta be honest Thanks. i wasn't expecting well i didn't know what to expect all i knew was, was a boxing movie so obviously right. i'm gonna compare it to other boxing movies and hope that it came out good having a video experience which super appreciated man and just having our music on the movie that was just really dope and then right. and when the movie came out it was like oh dang this is great this is i just want all the eyes to be on this and see it like you're doing something that's been done so many times but you're doing it in a way where it's different it's got the good parts of these you know classic movies but at the same time it's got elements that you know nobody has thought of um that's one of the things i wanted to bring up because was this your first screen uh, film that you wrote? Be no, this was... Um, okay, yeah, so this was the first film I wrote way back in the day, like nine years ago, actually. But it was, like, you know, been revised so many times because I, I was not a good writer back when I first started writing. Or, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. So I feel like, you know, this is the second screenplay that's been produced, and so I had enough time to hopefully make it better than it was. And... And yeah, I mean, it it was definitely a genre where like so it's been done so many times, but I had some new things to say, I think. And, uh, you know, it was great to work with you guys, man. I, we were very lucky. That song is really dope, as Thank people you. know now. And uh, yeah, that definitely enhanced the movie for sure. Yeah. But so aside from just revising it, you know, to make it better, you also because so much time had passed, you know, not only your experience, but you also brought in the element of like um, the reality show, which Mm -hmm. you know originally i'm guessing that wasn't in there right true yeah originally it wasn't in there yeah because i felt like that's where our culture was going and i realized you know there's so many reality shows now it's insane and it's like a lot of um and at the same time there's a lot of great narrative tv too but um i was just trying to think of a way that would be realistic in modern day society how can we show what a newcomer boxer you know getting a shot at the title could actually look like in as realistic a sense as we could um in a modern day and so i thought that's that was a good way to do it yeah definitely i agree and i wasn't i didn't know one thing that i've learned to do because of the type of analytical asshole that i am uh <laughs> i just try my best especially when it's like a cast of people that i like or an idea of something that i i dig right off top I won't do research on it. If I know I'm going to see it sometime soon, I, I'll try to know as little about it as possible so that I could completely enjoy it 
you know, maximize my experience. And I had no idea, you know, really anything about the movie except, you know, the the overall idea that you're the boxer and you're going to end up fighting somebody big and, you know, hopefully win and we'll see what happens, you know. And I was just mm -hmm. very pleasantly surprised and, you know, had a great time. I don't want to dig too much into that. We're definitely going to put links, so I hope everybody will watch it. I've been pushing it for a couple years at this point, I feel like. <laughs> so links will be, you know, available for everybody to check out. But um, also just as impressive, if not more, is you're creating it and, and you know, bringing people to the table to invest and I feel like these are things that um, every artist out there is always trying to 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 get attention from people who are actually going to help them move forward. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I know it's it's too deep to go into, but could you kind of bring some general ideas of how you go about getting some investors or capital for your film, whether it's yourself or, you know, whoever it is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. When I first started and and still, it's like the scariest thing because like without the money, you can't make it really happen. Although I'll go back to that because you, you still can. But um, but look, when I first did the first movie, Listen to Your Heart, and I was, you know, a, a newbie. And, you know, basically at that point, I did I was uh, just doing what I thought I could do, which is basically looking for people in the uh, in the directories and stuff. I must have mailed, called, emailed, you know, hundreds of people, literally just throwing darts at a wall. And then I read this book, which is one of the books I wanted to recommend, which is, uh, if you're ever doing a movie or filmmaking or anything called from real to deal. And, uh, Quentin Tarantino read that book. He said, it says right on the cover and started his career. Uh, it's by Dove Simmons. That's just a great, like overall resource of like, start to finish what it takes to make a movie. And then after reading that book, I really narrowed down my focus on how to raise money, how to, you know, do the pre-production, sell a movie, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm not saying it, it's definitely a little dated at this point. Cause that was back in like the nineties and heyday of like the film festivals yeah. circuit and everything, which is a little different now, but in terms of raising money, here's my best advice. Um, I find that ironically people within your immediate circle are not the best people to go to it's it's the one removed that's always the best that's like your sweet spot because it's not some random cold call you made right. it's not it's not your friend or your dad or your uncle or something it's their friend or something where the only way they know you is through this professional relationship your mom or your dad or, or your brother or somebody has has told them about you and you know that's the only way they know you um, but they still, it's close enough where like they respect you and are going to take the meeting. So that's always been my most successful meeting. Mm -hmm. And I still will say it's just perseverance, man. And when you go in there, it's for any of the meetings, when you're meeting with an investor, it's always about like, you're going to do this project kind of thing, uh, no matter what. And here's what I got going on. And, you know, you want to act like it's a, a train that's going and you hop on if you want. If not, you know, there's other people. I never waste more than three meetings on someone without getting a check. That's my rule. Mm. Um, and then uh, I don't want to go too crazy into it, but uh, an, yeah, I mean, does that answer it? Oh, I yeah. can go on and on forever. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's great because there's so much in, in that little amount of, of info you've given the idea that you're setting yourself boundaries to not waste your time or the other person's time because they may not even mess with you on this one, but that doesn't mean that you guys don't have a good, you could have still built a stronger bond by not getting the exactly. money from this person for your next one idea is this one's going to do well without them. And they're going to realize, Oh man, maybe I should have invested. Well, let's see what we got now. And yeah, you know, the idea of like, yo, this train's going with or without you. It's not relying on you, whether it actually is or not, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and, and it kind of keeps the ball in your court, even though they're investing. Plus, at least for me, if I don't see that confidence and, and it seems like I would think people with more money, um, you know, they want to know that you're confident with your money that they're playing with. Mm -hmm. So if you come at me seeming kind of, you know, I'm going to have to do more work than just giving you my money. I'm probably not going to do that. So, right. <laughs> I see all that. Yeah. And the other thing is exactly. And the other thing is, you know, I, I can't say how much, how important it is to just be prepared as well with everything. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's the main thing, you know, that I do take it seriously when I, uh, have an investor, you know, I don't want to, waste anybody's money i want to maximize their return and all that stuff so i have like you know i got my business plan i got my script and the other thing is i got a team together i always like to 
really work with people that are ahead of me in my career, you know, that, that I can learn from that bring stuff to the table. So the better package you could put together and get people that you trust that are good to work with, you know, that always helps to raise money and, and get distribution and all that. Yeah. And I, I guess also throwing in, I just have to, because I've done it myself, whether it comes to like a podcast and kind of building a reputation um, through um, degrees of separation, like having, say you have a friend or, you know, with your movies, you had Sybil Shef- Shepherd. Um, mm-hmm. Was she one of the earlier people that you casted that helped to kind of build momentum, you know, as far as exactly. other roles? Yeah, it's like the chicken and the egg thing, too. Like money will come like once you cast that one person like a Sybil or Michael Clark Duncan, yeah. like the other money will come more so like for me i actually my strategy now is uh basically raise that seed money to attach that one or two big names and then raise the rest of the money after that it's just so much easier because you already have something that is that train and it's going and people see it it's a real thing and um and then they're much more willing to uh to listen you know and and invest yeah now shifting gears but kind of staying in the same idea um i know you've had at least one successful kickstarter campaign i don't know how things have changed in the last few years with kickstarter and indiegogo etc but what do you think about that um maybe you could give some tips and you know how you got there because you didn't do a 500 hundred dollar (laughs) campaign you know what i mean no true yeah i oh thank you man thank you See that, yeah, it was successful, but man, I'll tell you, that was not, not, that was not easy. Like I, I didn't realize it was 30 days of like busting my butt to get the word out. And like, you know, I think I was like tweeting and on Facebook every day and stuff just because, you know, it's, it's a funny thing I've been thinking about, you know, do I do that again or not? Cause I don't know if people, I don't really get how people look at it yet. I'm still sort of feeling it out. I think people are still feeling it out. Because I see it as a very positive thing. I think, like, you know, us indie artists, it's not the easiest to raise money. And it's great to, um, you know, be able to get that art out there. Because otherwise, you're just looking at studio films or studio projects on the music side. And, you know, it's great to be able to do the the work that we do. And um, I look at it as long as you're given good value in, like, those rewards. I was trying to give value, like, you're basically just buying the album before it mm-hmm. comes out so you're helping me make it by buying it before you know you're as opposed to you see, yeah exactly some of these kickstarter ones are more like um not giving much for for the reward you know they're like you pay ten dollars and get a thank you or something so i just really wanted to make sure i made those uh those levels of reward good but uh but i was i was blessed that that went through but yeah like i said it wasn't easy you got to really like grind it out for 30 days do nothing else yeah what do you think about um like I'll use him as an example just because it was such a big thing when it happened, but Spike Lee using it, was it for uh old boy that he used it for? Uh, yeah, I know he used it. I can't remember what, which film it was, but yeah, I saw that and I saw his video and everything. That was impressive too. Um, it was, yeah. it was kind of controversial because here's this person who's known on such a large scale, you know, clearly a legend, like five movies ago already and now he's Mm -hmm. using this thing that everyone looks at as my neighbor who makes music is raising money for his album on kickstarter and now spike lee who you know the shoes the shoes it's got to be the shoes (laughs) you know michael jordan (laughs) and all that and now he uses kickstarter so you know i know at first i I was kind of like with the hype too like oh man this dude's using come on dude you kind of doing too much but right then he's like yeah i've been doing this right i hear you yeah well it's the same thing with like zach braff raised a lot of money on there um and then um they also raised a lot for veronica mars so i mean yeah that's what i mean so like people were looking at that and it's like that's what i'm saying it's very conflicting like some people hated that and i i had mixed feelings too because these people are millionaires you know and they're doing that but at the same time as long like i said as long as those rewards make sense and it's just like going out to the audience earlier and asking them to help make this project because the thing is it's a project that probably wouldn't have happened if you didn't do it that way you know it's like it's the studios are not investing in stuff that is not proven and a lot of the stuff even if it's spike lee it's like it, it, it's got to be like you know you know what sells like the <laughs> it's like i, I don't uh, want arnold schwarzenegger meets uh rocky balboa meets it's like you gotta exactly it to everything oh man it's gotta be on fire and have cgi and yeah, whatever yeah. so for those kind of projects i can understand it and hopefully uh 
hopefully it gets in. But there's a new thing, actually, instead of just crowdfunding, which is more like crowd investing that I think is coming, um, where the people can actually invest and then see their money come back to them also, oh. even in small amounts, like $5, $10, $1,000. I don't know how much, but that that interests me because I think people don't feel like they're taken advantage of. I don't want people to feel like they get taken advantage of, you know? What's that? Tell me more about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's very new. Uh, there's this one company, I forget who's involved in it. It might be Elijah Wood or something, but it's called M something or whatever. I think the, I think the uh, SEC passed this thing where you can now have these small investments. There's a lot of paperwork behind it as far from what I can tell. And like, it's not just something anybody can do, but um, hopefully they there becomes a platform, you know, soon where you can take advantage of it on our level. But uh, it basically opens up the investment. Say you're doing a million dollar film, you could sell units as small as a thousand dollars or something, and a lot of different people can participate and actually get paid back through like PayPal or whatever else. Pretty cool. Because another thing of this is the people, and not everyone wants to feel this way, and even some people who might with someone like you or I don't want to uh don't have the same feelings when it comes to somebody who has more money or whatever they think they have more money but they're taking part in what we're doing they're actually a reason why this exists whether that's true or not you know they're contributing so when they get that free cd and that shirt or whatever else they got they feel like they're part of that thread that put that shirt together or, you know even if their name's not in the credits in the cd or whatever so a lot of times people want to be investors they want to um they got acorn or robin hood on their phone and they're like i want to be a movie guy you know what i mean let me yeah. invest a thousand bucks into this instead of buying gold or whatever <laughs> yeah man i mean it's a pretty exciting possibility so hopefully that works yeah hopefully it doesn't just set oversaturated like it did with music having it so easy to record stuff <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, that brings me to something else. So, you know, you do the music, the acting, but you also do everything on the background. What do you have a preference? Do you prefer to be the front man in front of the camera on the mic? Or do you f prefer the behind the scenes making the camera and the mic guy look and sound good? So you mean in terms of music or filmmaking? Just in general. or you In general? Me? I mean, you might not have. You know, I always, I always loved being in front. That's that's sort of my main core thing that's who i started out as but um but you know the being behind the camera i don't love everything behind the camera i gotta be honest mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of talented people that do love that you know when i say everything behind the camera that excludes writing and directing because i do love those two but other than that a lot of the other things you know you really gotta love it and there's a lot of talented people out there that really do love it um but for me it's like acting is number one then I would say writing and then directing is number three in mm. terms of that. And then on the music side, for sure, like the singing and then the producing is like a far second for me. Right. Yeah, I hear that. Before we get into this questions, um, I wanted to, uh, you know, at the end of or towards the end in the in the trailer for the challenger, Michael Clark Duncan says something like, um, you know, you, you might be outclassed or out technique, but you won't be outworked or don't be outworked or something like that. It seems mm -hmm. like that's something that you live your career on when you I'm assuming you wrote that when you wrote that. Yep. Did you feel was that coming from you? Was that coming from a real place? Absolutely, man. Yeah, it's part of my notes here, actually. It's like, yeah, that's uh, those are words I live by for sure. I mean here's how I look at it. Like there's a lot, especially in this industry, there's a lot of things I can't control. Right. But there's one thing that I will definitely not get caught doing and that's not working as hard as I can. So I'm going to do everything I can that is in my control to put myself and whatever I'm doing in the best chance for success. And that's how I look at it, you know? Mm -hmm. And you're like a train, you're moving, you got a destination, you're going, when you get there, maybe there's a new destination. There most likely mm -hmm. will be, but there's just a yeah. few stops. I might not even stop. I'll just slow down enough for you to jump on. You want to jump on? No? Okay, maybe I'll see you at the next stop. So there you go. Keep that working hard, I love it. man. Yeah, real talk. No, I was going to say, and it never, it never materializes in the way that you expect. It's always going to be changing, but at least if you just keep driving forward, you know, and have your eyes on the prize, that's, that's how you get there. Yeah, real talk, man. Okay, we're going to go to a quick break, and we'll be right back. Status Escalade Podcast. What's going on? It's your man Kylie, and I want to tell you about my sponsor, DeadStockCloset.com. DeadStockCloset specializes in vintage gear and accessories of all styles and brands. Shop at DeadStockCloset.com and receive your purchase hand-cleaned, ironed, and ready to wear. 
Use the coupon code SEPODCAST at checkout and get 10% off your purchase, plus an additional discount on your next one. Deadstockcloset.com. Vintage flying in straight to your doorstep. And for any artist looking to gain exposure, check out StatusEscalade.com. Status Escalade is a PR company who's spreading the word on new up-and-coming hip-hop artists for years. Go to the contact section at StatusEscalade.com to discuss a package and rates. Let them know you heard about them through our podcast and get 50% off your first project. And that's at StatusEscalade.com. And lastly, don't forget to check out 2MX Hologram Radio at 2 mexhologramcom The 24-hour hip-hop radio channel with shows like Proof of Life Radio, The Friday Up, and more. Fresh and rare hip-hop 24 hours a day. Available on TuneIn Radio or stream it directly from 2 mexhologramcom 2 Max Hologram Radio. Everything is about to change. Now let's get back to the show. I put in work and watch my status escalate. <laughs> status escalate podcast. Here with my man Kent Moran. Happy to finally get you on. So you're back to being a New Yorker, huh? Yeah, well, kind of. It turns out my fiance and I we were looking around the city and everything. It turns out since I came, since I left, New York has gotten quite expensive. So we uh, we're basically in a suburb outside of New York. So I'll put you out there, sir. Because yeah. So you know, as you were saying it earlier. It sounded, and I maybe I've took that wrong, but it sounded like you were taking um, New York as being more of a life, uh, a, a life experience than possibly living in LA. Is that right? Uh, well, just for me, because I had been. The thing about LA is I love LA, but um, like I said, it's sort of like a one industry thing. It's like the entertainment industry mm-hmm. and all that it involves. And in New York, I, I do like you know, having my friends and other people I'm exposed to here that just do other things that like are totally different and totally, you know, eye opening for me. It helps me with characters I'm writing, characters I'm playing and just like inspiring me in different ways. And I just remembered that about New York that like you could just be in the city and and just people watching and you just learn so much. So, yeah, I get inspired by by New York for sure. Yeah, that's dope. I never, I've never been, unfortunately, not yet. Oh man, I was oh, hoping man. when when you were gonna do the video in the Bronx. Oh fucking, I yeah. was, I was so hyped. And the Bronx, you know, when it comes to hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Oh, of course, man. Yeah, the Bronx is the bomb. Yeah, but it was still a very dope video shoot, man. I'm again, I I gotta go back to that one. That, that'll be in the show notes, so you guys could check it out. Um, yeah, that was yeah. Fun. So I was telling you about the questions and kind of, you know, as usual, these questions are are made to hopefully get some some real um, feeling and stories and ideas out of my guests, so that the listeners can possibly implement it into their own career strategies and get further and. You know, the fact that you come from so many different backgrounds is only going to give them an opportunity to, you know, come from left field with their approach, whereas everybody else is reading the same music books, if that, (laughs) you know Mm -hmm, what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, with all that being said, do you have any daily routines? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of these things of these questions are like, I feel like you could apply to anything. Like you just said, it doesn't matter. So like for me, though, uh, yeah, every day I, I do pray and like I basically say to God what I'm thankful for. And uh, and I just put that out there, you know. And then another thing I like to do is I write down every day, you know, what I have to do specifically for that day. Um, and just just to set these goals and everything. Now, separately from that, I'll tell you a little later, but I have bigger and broader goals that I put out, you know, once every so often. But every day I, I just like writing it down because when I write it down, I feel like that makes it real. Mm, yeah, I, I do it. And then I fall off and stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get no, it's, I'm not saying I do it all. I'm saying, you know, right. at least no. I write it down. I'm saying I can't write it down for more than like three days in a row. I just suck. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, is, I do feel hard. you. Writing it down. Do you feel um, you put things like that in your phone or your iPad or whatever? Uh, I, I like using pen and paper still. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like I, I buy these little pads and stuff and I put them right on my desk. So it's always there. You know, I just like to have it in a place where when I'm working, I could just focus on it, like in that area. I, I, I seen it. I feel the same exact way. I feel like writing it down. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is, man. But it's definitely better for me. It's realer for me. I seen it on a post yeah. I seen it on a post it commercial with this girl like jumping, trying to play basketball. So every day she's like putting a post it higher in her room. And then one day she like touches the backboard with a post it. I don't know. But it says like a statistic. That's awesome. It is a good commercial. It says like a statistic that um, X amount of people, it's a high percentage who actually write things down are more likely to do it, you know, rather than just having thoughts in their head or, you know, whatever. Absolutely, man. I was going to say, you could, you could have a, a dream or, or, or something you want to go after or do. But I've always found, that ever since college, because that's when I started it, 
when I wrote my goals down in college, like I didn't think they were possible. I put up some lofty goals and I was like, that's not going to happen. I think in college I had like, I, I wasn't doing so well this one year in terms of school. And I put like 4.0 on the wall and I was like, there's no way I'm getting a 4.0 there. This is ridiculous. But I ended up getting a three, nine, five for that, for that month. And it was just like, what? But I swear to God, it's just cause I wrote that out. That's, and and you're aiming what high. Think. You're aiming high. It's realistic, but it ain't easy. You got to stretch yourself, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's good shit, man. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have any life hacks? Well, so that that kind of comes to the same thing. I was actually putting for that that um, so for for the year, I like to write my top five goals. I try to keep it small, five simple goals that I want to accomplish for the year. And it's not just writing it down for me, but it's putting it on a wall where I'm going to see it every single damn day. And that just gets it in my head. And so far it has not failed me. I haven't done it every year, but the years that I have done it, it really works. I mean, it's just that visual, it's not just the writing, but the visual like stimulus. I don't know. It's like just gets in your head and your whole being, you know? Yeah. You know, I think, and going back to, um, as far as writing things, you know, down every day, or do you know what those dream boxes are? I think it's a no. I haven't American heard of thing. that. It's it's basically a little. I'm sure they look many different ways. I don't know if there's a traditional thing that I I don't know what it looks like, but what it is is pretty much a little box that holds, um, you know, um, I guess goals or it, I, you know, I really don't know exactly oh, cool. what it is. Yeah, but the idea is like it has these goals in there, and it's a dream. You know, your dreams, and you read them every day. And I think this is a perfect example of like. So many people miss out on things because they look at something like that as magical and they don't believe in magic. Um, you know, right. if you don't want to believe in magic, that's fine. But it doesn't have to be magic. <laughs> you know? Right. Dude, I, I'm here. You. I mean, it sounds kind of silly, right? It sounds kind of like childish. But at the end of the day, if you think about it, you're reaching for some magical goals. You're reaching for yeah. some shit that like most people. Are, I'm sorry if I can't say that. No, my no, bad. But uh, yeah, but like you're reaching for some stuff that, you know, most people would think is too hard including myself i'm like i don't think i can get that but you know until i wrote it down and put it up on the wall you know i didn't i couldn't get there but then i did you know that kind of thing i think it's something as simple sometimes as just letting yourself know that even if i don't think it's possible for myself it's possible for this dude that i know and he's not too far too different from me so if he could do it Mm -hmm. why can't i i mean there's so many ways to, to show yourself that you can do more than your life taught you or your surroundings taught you or even your family and friends taught you. So God damn it. Stop limiting yourself people. Okay. So, (laughs) so, um, do you have any daily obstacles and, um, how do you overcome them or just deal with them on a daily? So actually my biggest in this industry, my biggest obstacle is self doubt. I would say Mm -hmm. it's like, because this industry is so much about like, what was the last thing you did and you get judged on that. And it's also so subjective. It's not like, You know, it's not like you are in a business and you made a profit or a loss and so easy to see that. It's like here, you know, you're judging yourself a lot. Your people are judging you. So it's always hard to, like, keep that confidence. And so my daily obstacle is, like, you know, still having that drive to go for it no matter how many times I fail or no matter how much adversity I come upon. Like, just keeping that confidence and realizing that, you know what, I was able to do this before because I believed in myself. And so I'm going to do it now. And, and, uh, so that's it. I struggle with that, but that's, I think what we all struggle with. I think also like, and I don't know if you see it like this, but you use your dad as an example. He had, he started so many different businesses, but he was successful on, on so many businesses too. And sometimes you look at a percentage like you know, a shot percentage of like Kobe being so low sometimes, but you're like, yeah, but he scored like X amount of points. Like he took Mm -hmm. a lot of shots, but he sure didn't make a lot of shots. So, you know, you just got to go out there and, and, and learn to, to deal with the, the failures and fail fast and move on to that next one real quick. It's always exactly. another girl to dance with if those three chicks said no. You know what I mean? <laughs> so true. And then when they see you dancing with the other one, then they'll say yes. Exactly. That's how it works. But knowing that now allows you to approach it in that way. You don't even really want to dance with these chicks. You just want them to think that because you already right. know that you're going to dance with homegirl at the end. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good stuff. Exactly, man. <laughs> yeah. So, um, man, it kind of started off talking about this. Um, how do you ensure execution? Um, that's, that's a good question, really. Uh, 
basically I, I have to just say I just do my best really because there's so many variables you can't control but like I say it's the hard work that like you can control so when I'm when I'm working at something I do that as hard as I can or like as good as I can whatever it is and the other thing is I bring in you know people to help me I, you can't do everything yourself so um, I always look for like good team members or good um, people that like I said are ahead of me in their career or whatever that yeah. can bring something to the table nothing more important than mentors i feel like it's really hard to get ahead without them and uh i've been blessed to be able to have some already but i'm always looking for more yeah yeah and and like you said man having people that are better than you in, in things <laughs> mm -hmm. people yeah. love to be the best i want to be the best too but not because everyone around me sucks <laughs> you know totally Jeez, well you know man. early on too i was like early on i was like so trying to prove myself all the time and i still you know, everyone wants to prove themselves as something, but then I realized, you know what, there's a lot of people out there trying to prove themselves too, who are also great at this thing. And, you know, why not like be great together, like yeah. get the best out of them. They get the best out of you and just work together. So the teamwork can really be powerful. Do you have like a competitive nature with your team members and your family and friends and stuff like that? <sighs> Um, honestly, I would say more of a collaborative. I, I, I think my family is pretty competitive. I grew up in a very competitive family, like with sports and all that stuff. But, um, but I like the collaboration more. I like the, uh, pushing each other like together as opposed to against each other. Right. I think I need Personal. to stop describing it in that. I see, I don't think so though. So, because I see it the same way as you, but I see it as competitive. Like, okay, I got a friend, Rick Scales. Uh, he and I mm -hmm. are both pretty decent with the freestyles. Um, you know, you I, I think some of the best in, in San Diego. We've battled a couple times. I beat him. He beats me. Mm -hmm. But we, when we're done, yeah, I might be like, yeah, that's why I beat you. And he might say the same. But we're more laughing and, and happy over, like, getting to the end because we had fun doing it. And it, like, it Absolutely. pushes us, right? Yeah, no, you need that to push you. I, yeah, I, I just meant sometimes people get like crazy with it in different ways, but that's a that's a positive yeah, collaboration yeah. like sort of um, deal, and and it's always good to push each other like that. Yeah, exactly. It's not you know I've always because I've had this conversation with many people because I'm so competitive with everything. Obviously, I want to win, but for instance, I, I have confidence in how good of a writer I am. So if I do a song mm -hmm. and I think the other guy in the song did has a better verse than me, I'm super ecstatic because I know my shit was dope. So that must mean this song is good as hell, you know? Right. So <laughs> it, I want to be better, but if I'm not, that's the way I think about it. And I'm like slapping his hand like, good shit. Next one, though, I'm going to get you. That's how I look Absolutely. at it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that'll drive you to get even better. Exactly. Yeah, however, however you see like to, to push yourself. But when you can when you can really appreciate your friends and um even people that i don't personally know um i might be a big fan of and and they did something you know i didn't expect them to do or even just you know a placement on a movie or or a show that i'm a fan of it's really dope because now i'm like i i feel invested in them as a fan and then it's also something i feel i can attain as well and it kind of motivates me to do it so yeah I totally that way do you have any rules for collaborating or partnering with someone or even just um, taking a job for or with someone? Yeah, you know, well, other than the what we've already talked about a little bit, which is like get, finding people that are that you can learn from yeah. that are ahead of you, et cetera, that. But also, like, I do like to sort of test the waters out because I have had, you know, great experiences with working with people. And then I've had others that were, you know not good and didn't work out so you really when you're getting involved in a project as serious as like a movie or something where you're going to be working every single day for a long period of time you know you want to like maybe do a short film with them or like it's not it's not enough to like interview them you have to like actually be with them and work together a little bit before you can really say bring them on as a producer or something like like that big you know like i like to not get in bed too much with somebody until we really feel each other out you know what i mean yeah i mean i've i was fortunate to live with my with my wife for a few years before we moved in with each other but you yeah. start off everyone starts off different but i have some friends who have been with people for a long time and then they're gonna get married and they've never even lived they've never even stayed in the same house for more than like two days and i'm like yeah. it doesn't mean it's not gonna work 
But dude, you should look into that a little more because yeah. you never know. She might be leaving all her hairs all over the floor when she shaves. It could be <laughs> silly stuff like that, or it could be some real stuff. So, you know. Yeah, dude, it's a whole different world. Jeez that's Louise. that's totally true. That's actually a really good analogy because that you know I, I'm in the same boat in terms of like me and my fiance sort of lived together for a good few months before we got engaged and everything. And that's honestly really important to me because you it is a whole different thing, and it's not. It's not saying, you know, that if it doesn't work out, it's because it's the other person's fault. But you just got to see how you vibe, how you connect, because some people are going to have different thresholds for certain things that bother them or whatever. And you got to learn that stuff. Yeah. And and I'll take it a step further, too. Like, you know, as a relationship, there's compromise. If you really care about that other person, there are some things you're going to have to compromise you know, to make them happy. I mean, I would say pending, they're willing to do the same thing. And when it mm-hmm. comes to business relationships, you may really want to work with somebody that you don't mesh w- so much with, and they might feel the same way about you. It's like, okay, well, how do we make this work? Because we're fucking adults, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and we like yeah, each exactly. work or whatever. So I know I have a certain kind of personality. Let me make sure this or that, uh, you know, if you're this kind of person, you probably know it by now, I would think, and just right. kind of figure it out. You know what I mean? Because I've only heard stories, but I have to feel it's a version of that in every business. There's so many people that if they show that they're tough to work with, they're pretty much written off unless they're so amazing that people are willing to overlook it. Exactly. And even then, like, it's not long lasting. I feel like if you're hard to work with, it's just terrible. So I think, and you can be not as talented and be great to work with and have the opposite effect. People would love to work with you and you get hired more. So I think it's really important to be good to work with yeah. and and not to like jump in so early because you may think, oh, this person's awesome. Like they got this and that going on. But honestly, if, if it's going to be a negative situation for you, man, I got so many friends that have worked for like big time producers and directors. And I'm like, at first I'm like, oh, that's amazing. You know, what did you learn from them? What's going on? But dude, they're just getting like, I learned you how know, to make coffee. Yeah. <laughs> if it's just abused, bro. Starbucks. Like, yeah man yeah. more than that it's like you wouldn't believe what some of these directors and producers got their assistants doing and whatever so you know just just be careful before you really get involved in that kind of collaboration yeah. and it can be the best thing in the world when it's right you know yeah i think also like you know as an artist um making music and have, being such a fan of people who are actually attainable and earning the respect of certain artists and on some homie stuff we're cool But the minute you start working with them, you kind of find out like, oh, okay, they feel a certain way about themselves. And Mm -hmm. it may be just you or it may just be the way they feel when they're working with somebody else. But they got you jumping through all these flaming hoops. And, you know, as (laughs) as time goes on, I'm less and less willing to jump through any hoops at all for, you know, I'm not doing this for my wife or my kids. Why am I going to do this for you, fool? Right, exactly. But it's like, I really want to work with you. But not until you do this. And, (laughs) you know what I mean? We can't. So as time goes on, you know, um, always just like our goals, we're always adjusting them. We're always tweaking them. Sometimes we're just like, you know what? Fuck this goal. Actually, I accomplished this goal a long time ago. I just didn't realize it because whatever reason. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'll take that. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be a case by case, whatever's right for you. And that's and that's it. Yeah, most def. So could you give me uh, an example? like a book or an article or a movie or something that you really feel, I know we kind of touched on one earlier. I don't know if that's it, but something that you really Mm -hmm. feel kind of changed your life or helped you get to where you're at. Yeah. So there's, there's two books because I do, I'm not a big reader to be honest, which is crazy. And because when I am going into a new venture of something that I don't know a lot about, the first thing I do is I, yeah, I research my ass off. I like, I get like four or five books on the subject, you know, ones that I have already like looked into, make sure they're good. And, and, you know, out of all those books I've read, um, on different things, cause when I was first to listen to your heart, for example, um, or even before I wrote that, um, I, I did have a few mentors teaching me how to write, but I used one book that I thought was just really great and really easy to understand relative to a lot of these other books, um, in terms of screenplay structures, so if there's screenwriter, um most people most screenwriters have already heard of it but it's called save the cat and it's it's just it's not going to teach you how to be a talented writer it's going to teach you how to format what people are used to seeing on the screen which is so important because people have these great ideas and they just don't know how to deliver it in a way that you're used to seeing and subconsciously as a viewer 
you're watching and you're just like, you're not engaged and you don't know why, because it's a great idea. And it's really because of formatting. And so mm-hmm. once you get that down, it's like, it's great. So it's that one. And then in terms of filmmaking from real to deal, like I mentioned before, it's just a great book. It'll walk you through everything you need to know uh, to do a film. Nice. Now, um, this was something I, I, I wanted from the beginning. It was going to be uh, top three do's, top three don'ts, and top three must-haves. But now it's just the top three. Give me one do, one don't, and one must-have. Okay. One do, always believe in what you think above everybody else. And that is for real because this is interesting. I've had to learn this the hard way over the years. You know, growing up, you place so much emphasis in what your mom or your dad thinks, your brother, or maybe your friend or your teacher. But at the end of the day, like, if you don't, if you don't believe in the decision that you're going to make, it's, you're never going to be behind it. You're never going to succeed at it as much as you could. So when it comes to your agent, your manager, your friend, whatever, you got to listen to them. But at the end of the day, you got to do what's right for you. So I always do what's right for me. You can't have a big support system either if you don't really truly know what you want to begin with. You got to have that confidence to, I know not everybody's meant to be a leader, man, but that doesn't mean you don't have to have certain leader qualities. Not only Mm -hmm. are those things going to get you there, but it's going to get the people behind you to have confidence in you having confidence in yourself. Absolutely. And uh, in terms of the don'ts, I, uh, this is one that when I first got into the industry, like you see this popping up everywhere. Like I never want to sacrifice my morals or who I am to achieve something, some goal or whatever. Cause I just knew, and I know that I'll look back and be, you know, disappointed in myself and it won't be worth it. So I've always tried to, even if I had to take the harder road, not, you know, live by those rules, you know, mm. and give me a do. <laughs> Oh, no, oh, so no, that was the have. don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, sorry, must have uh, confidence, man. Must mm. have confidence in yourself. I think that's the simplest one. Like, it, it it, might not be easy, but it's not difficult. You know what I mean? Confidence mm-hmm. in yourself. 100%. Yeah, man. Man, if there's one thing I'm trying to teach my son, it's like fearlessness, bravery. Or not fearlessness, bravery. Like, I, yeah. I, I'm very... He's only five. And it's already been like a good two, three years. His name is Keikoa, which means brave, amongst other things. But it means brave That's and awesome. strong. And like, I explained to him, yo, bravery... He knows what bravery means, but I... I I specifically tell them like without fear, there's no bravery. Like if someone does mm-hmm. isn't scared of stuff, they're not brave because they're not scared. So understand how those things work together. And with that being said, having confidence to know that you can do it, and and if you fail, like it's gonna be cool. You got another chance. You know what I mean? In most cases, that's that's such a good point about the fear thing. Yeah, I mean, if you're not afraid, then you're not being brave. So you gotta. That, that, that's that's another thing I would say is like most of the things I've achieved or want to achieve always scare me. And you got to be afraid of it if, you know, not, not you have to be afraid of it, but like you have to like face that fear and get through that in order to get something so great that, you know, that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So yeah. you have to face that. Yeah. I've heard uh, a couple of people say, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. So mm-hmm. definitely. exactly, man. Oh, we're doing good with time, sir. This was, and this is good. good too. Like, I know I'm talking nice. over you sometimes, but we're on the phone. So it's a little harder to. <laughs> no worries, you know, brother. Yeah. No. But dude, I'm enjoying this. I, you know, I checked out a couple interviews. I wanted to make sure I'm not just going over the same things that you're always saying and stuff like that. I know how it gets boring sometimes. No, these have been great questions, man. No, for sure. Man. But um, in the end, you know, I think everybody's got something real to say. And, and the, the, best part about this is that everyone interprets it in their own way. Can you give the listeners some words to live by? Look, I would just say going on the confidence thing, believe in yourself and believe that your hard work will pay off because a lot of times in the middle of it, you're just grinding and you're like, damn, you know, what am I doing this for? Is this even worth it? And every time at some point, even though it might seem really far in the future, you know, it's going to, it's going to pay off. People recognize that and, and good, good people get ahead. I feel, I feel like so. Man, I hear that, you know, I've been blessed to be around uh, a cool amount of success, people I consider to be successful in like music and other arts. And everyone has told me the same thing, like their success, their true success came like just after the times that were hardest in their lives, like when they really thought they were going to give up, that's when their success came. 
So when mm-hmm. you see that it's just too hard for you and you're at your breaking point, I feel like that's when you got to turn it up and really just go because success is right around the corner and whatever you want to call it, you want to call it the devil. You want to call it just, you know, energy Mm -hmm. universe. It just gets harder. Like the end of a level in a video game. You got to beat that boss though. (laughs) Exactly, man. Endurance, man. You got to stay in it. You know, Mm -hmm. someone gave me some good advice actually, uh, that I, I forgot to mention. It really sort of changed my whole perspective. And it's probably part of the reason I'm still doing this stuff is, uh, they said, and they had already been in the industry for 10 years. And this is when I was only there for five years or so. And they were like, it is an endurance game. Like you just sticking around, just sticking around and doing what you're doing and just keep grinding. You will be so shocked at how many people fall off and like are out of the game in like five years, three years, you know, whatever, because it's freaking hard work and not everyone's willing to put that in and you got to love it. And I've, I'm telling you, I know so many friends, so many colleagues and stuff that I've met and seen. And after two years, they they go back home three years, four years, they're out of the industry. Um, And I, it's so true after 10 years now, it's like, it's like so much more is culminating now that I, that I would never have thought would have been the case. And and it's partly just because I've been grinding, you know, you got to be patient, plant those seeds. You can't just throw the, throw the cake in the oven and put it on 500 degrees. You know, you gotta, you gotta lower the temp and ride it out a little bit, but you could cook other stuff. (laughs) <laughs> that's right man a lot of times that overnight success is is a 10-year overnight success you know yeah. what I mean? and if it's a true overnight success that shit comes back like you know like a, a quick diet like you lose 100 pounds well you're gonna gain 150 pounds real fast right. exactly. like exactly, overnight man. success exactly. is just that it's overnight success and it's overnight gone <laughs> so yeah. yeah man i hear you dude so true man that was great dude um can you yeah man it was great give me i uh go ahead and and tell the people how they could get in touch with you contact you if if you'd like them to uh your social media how to check of course, you out yeah. and upcoming projects current projects whatever you got going man i'd love to hear it yeah so uh first of all yeah you can uh, reach me on twitter facebook instagram it's just kent moran um and uh and then i also have uh wishing well pictures which is my uh production company but uh yeah so I, i'm working on a few things now i can't i'm so bummed i can't mention mm-hmm. which one of them is because this is a really exciting project that came to me um from this uh like well, trying to figure out what i can say but uh essentially i i just came back from dc where uh, I worked with this director on something that we're going to be doing. Um, I can't say what it is yet, but you guys are going to be very excited about it. I think, um, you're killing and, me. I did something with someone and it was cool. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I get it though. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's cool. But, uh, so there's that I'm working on and then there's, um, my next movie and, uh, one of my other, so I've just been writing a lot in the last few months nice. and, uh, one of my other movies got, uh, uh, screenplays rather got uh some good award recognition and stuff so that's been cool but yeah so i'm in the middle of developing those two projects uh that i can't say right now but <laughs> I, it sounds horrible You're killing me but, you know <laughs> i know i know nah, that's good anyway that's what i'm working on <laughs> <laughs> i got these two things i'm kind of doing it's dope you can't know about it yet though all right yeah but, nah I'm, I'm looking forward to it man i already you know i mean i know like to the game, I guess, or, or the viewers, you might be new, but I know you've been putting in work for a while and dude, your last two projects was like one better than the last. And the first one was great to begin with. So I can't wait to see the next one. You know, you have my support, whether I'm directly involved with it or not, as always, dude. And, um, just please let me know when you got stuff coming out that you can't talk about. I'll find a way to put it out there to my peoples, man. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. It was great being on the show. It sounds like a great show you got here. And, uh, I'd love to work with you again, so definitely. Man, stay in touch, brother. All right, my man. Well, that's my man, Kent Moran. You know who it is. It's your man, Kylie. Status Escalade Podcast. We out. Peace to the colleagues. Really dope talk with my dude, Kent. He's a great guy and a straight hustler, man. I see huge things for this dude in his future. Please be sure to check out all his music and movies, especially his latest flick, The Challenger, which is a fresh boxing movie, and I have a few songs in it, too, plus a video. That's all going to be in the show notes. Just go to 310music.net and search SEP016 in the search box. Don't forget to follow me at Kylie310 on all social media platforms and watch my new weekly rap video series at boysweekly.com with me and my man, Mudge One. Really picking up some steam. 
Be sure to visit PlatformCollection.com for other great shows on the network, like my man 60 show, Life on the Road with 60 East. Also, the Two Max Hologram podcast, Really Though, Crappy Awesome, Orchestrated, and of course, my other show, Proof of Life Radio, plus more, man, all on the Platform Collection network. Also, don't forget to check out Two Max Hologram Radio at Two Max Hologram.com. That's the 24-hour hip-hop radio channel with shows like Proof of Life Radio, Stereotypes, L.A. to the Bay, The Up, and more. Fresh and rare hip-hop, 24 hours a day, available on TuneIn Radio or stream it directly to TumexHologram.com. Tumex Hologram Radio. Everything's about to change. Big thanks to my sponsors, DeadStockCloset.com. DeadStockCloset specializes in vintage gear and accessories of all styles and brands. When you shop at DeadStockCloset.com, you're going to receive your items iron cleaned and ready to wear. No cigarette smell or pet hairs, just straight professional business with my folks over there. Man, use coupon code SEPODCAST at checkout to get 10% off your purchase. Plus, you're going to get an additional discount on your next one. That's at DeadStockCloset.com. Vintage flyness straight to your doorstep. Also, last but not least, thanks to StatusEscalate.com. Status Escalate is a PR company whose purpose is to create awareness for you as an artist and expand your brand. Status Escalate's been spreading the word on new up-and-coming hip-hop artists for years with a strong focus on hip-hop. Go to the contact section at StatusEscalate.com to discuss a package and rates. Let them know you heard about them through us and our podcast and you get 50% off your first project. That's at StatusEscalate.com. I think that's about it, man. Shout out to everybody showing love. I really appreciate you continuing to to share the episodes, leave comments, ratings, and reviews. Hit me up, everything at Kylie310. Make sure you're checking out Bars Weekly. That's BarsWeekly.com. You can see what we got going on every week. Me and my man Muds won. Proof of Life Radio every other Wednesday for that dope hip-hop. Man, and uh, I guess that's about it, dude. I'll be back in two weeks with a new guest and more jewels for y'all. But until then, remember... You can plan for success, but you can't reach it without execution. Peace to the colleagues. I put in work and watch my status escalate. What do you like? Platformcollection.com. Com. Com.